Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, my name is Mr. Dogbo333, and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4, the New Order of Last Days of Europe, as Her Majesty's Most Lower Resistance. In the last video, we finished up the last bits of uh, planning and strategizing, and now it is time for our boys to come out. So, let, us, let me introduce you to the Resistance. Led by Claude Auchinleck. Patience is a virtue. Nobody remembers the man who strikes and fails. Nobody remembers because he dies anonymously and without note. Claude Auchinleck was forced to internalize his lesson during his last stand at Carlisle, holding with a few thousand militia and what scattered infantry that he could scrape together, whilst the rest of Brit the British generalship either fled or surrendered. He realized in that shelled out surround surrounded city that if he died there, nothing would be gained and all hope for Britain might be lost. So he surrendered. Pretended to find an aptitude for politics and joined the royal party as an MP, loyally supporting the new government. All the while, he began creating the most organized rebel group that England had ever seen, Her Majesty's Most Loyal Resistance. Alliance, dis despite its name, is dedicated solely to the expulsion of a German occupier, the collaboration as puppets from England, free elections, and restoration of democracy at all costs. Unlike many early groups, Resistance made no distinction in ideology other than opposition to fascism, and recruited any and all willing to join the cause. On behalf of Communists Love Resistance and Bill Alexander, the ultra-militant commandos of David Sterling, dozen other notorious bands of outlaws and freedom fighters swore loyalty to Auchinleck, the boss. And whilst the shadowy head of Resistance hunt was hunted far and wide, nobody suspected the mild MP of Newcastle was well past 70 years old. But now Resistance time, time has come. They rise in a rebellion to overthrow the government, and Auchinleck stands revealed to the world as our leader. Come death or glory, his shall be a tale remembered forever. Excellent. Now, so we have a couple focuses, it seems. So we'll go ahead and start with, we have never surrendered. Which is already completed. Many years ago, a great and righteous nation was struck down by the German Reich. Not for all our faults in defense or f some foreign conflict or for our own interests, but because Britain had sought to so stop the endless ma march of fascist butchery across Europe. Traitors from within sat upon her corpse, and those who would fight for her for what is right and were just forced to hide in the shadows. No longer. The banner is raised, the weapons are ready, and the Reich lies riven by chaos and petty conflict. There is no better time for this. There will be no second chance. Today, the people of England raise their heads and march to make war on those who betrayed them all those years ago. Our men and women are not aligned by some petty ideology or creed, but because to struggle against tyranny is the only right and just course of action left to us. We'll fight in the cities, we'll fight in the hills, and in the fields. We'll fight until the last German lies dead upon our beaches. We will never surrender. Hmm. What do we got? So let's go ahead and start for the workers. Remember London is a word on 10,000 traitors' lips. Remember the butchery of the traitors on leash when they felt the, their control of the people slipping. Remember the bombs and the shells and the massacres. The London uprising failed, its martyrs are well known. Yet now the proletariat have another chance to usher in an era of liberation. Resistance is a cause not united by some ideological vision. It's a cause for all those who want vengeance upon the beast who despoiled our nation and on the traitors who helped them do it. But Alexander, the bloody je red general, stands with us. He's stitched together the left resistance after London, and he'll guide us through the fight come hell or high water. Now we shall strike down the old order. They will know our rage. They will know our suffering, and they will know that we forget not a single one of their horrid acts. Workers of England, men and women of the proletariat, your liberation is at hand. So we've got dockyards, I guess. Uh, it's mainly early cruisers. Ooh, peculiar, but okay. We'll build a uh, convoys with the rest of our stuff. Do some civvy factories and then some military factories. 
We have a lot of unassigned divisions. How many troops do we have? We have 37. Interesting. So we'll take these guys up here. Let's get a field marshal sign. Let's do Richard Hull. He seems like a solid guy to stick with. And then for these guys, we'll go... Huh. Don't really have... We have a tank guy. So he's pretty much our, it looks like our only armored vehicle is here. So we'll take the rest of these, we'll take the non-motorizer tank guys. We'll put these guys in a unit with We'll do a uh, old order. Go and attack there, there. Get you over there. Get these guys down here for now signed to Robert Bray. So I think we'll get these guys assigned to an army here. We'll do Douglas Douglas Kendrew. You guys for now work on crushing that pocket. We'll get most of these guys I think down to here. See if we can't take Oxford out. Uh, we'll take this very slow because I'm not sure. These six we'll put here. Make sure we take over East Anglia permanently. And Norwich. I think we already got Norwich handled pretty well. The German Civil Wars presented us with a golden opportunity for freeing England from its collaborations with oppressors and restoring democracy to people. We manage increasing public attacks on the government to share, show the people that they do not have to live in the shadows anymore. Now, it is time to strike at the heart of this corrupted England. After a brief radio message, with the monarch's vote, the first uprisings began. York was the first to fall, and after assault on the armored base and brief skirmishes with the police force, our troops declared on public radio that a new free England would be formed from the ashes of the old regime. Other towns in the north were quick to follow, finding the Midlands and South continues as we seek to break take the hold of the government on those regions. Our preparation would prove critical in the coming days as we seek to secure territory for the war. We must also look to our allies both across the Atlantic and across the Channel. War makes our strange bad fellows, and we must embrace them if we are to stand a chance at winning this war. We are not as well armed as either Cornwall, Gellison, or the government troops, but with our militias and weapon caches, we should be able to match them in the field until help arrives. One day we'll hold Parliament in Westminster again, and serve the people of England as we bring our country back from the fascist abyss. We can assure ourselves that in this world, as a true beacon of freedom, and reign out our isles. Never again will our flags be lowered for an and our country defiled, for Britons shall never be slaves. Beautiful. These guys don't have that as a core. Uh, we'll keep doing this for now and see what we need to do. Right, so we can go ahead and start working on equipment. 
rifles I think we'll immediately need. Probably support equipment. Um, artillery. And we need a lot of rifles, so we're working on those as much as we can. And anti-tank equipment, it looks like. Get that going. We'll do this for now. Let me think. Not really sure what you're doing over there, bloke, but, uh... I appreciate your spirit. Warsaw Uprising. Um, what do we want to do with these blokes? Um, could probably see if we can get the uh, garrison knocked out with these guys. Today's shots have rang out across England that have heralded something far worse than the London Uprising of the 50s. For a second time in our history, England is in a state of civil war. Her Majesty must lower resistance, an organization containing the full spectrum of English po political outsiders from communists to a handful of more independently minded fascists, have declared a revolt against the collaborationist government of Prime Minister Alec Douglas Home. Speaking of resistance headquarters, its leader, former General Claude Auchinleck, alongside famed communist rebel Bill Alexander, resistance fighter David Sterling, have declared that England will be a free nation or they will die trying. Our fight has only started. We can do, train up some basic divisions, it looks like. Namely, militia. Uh, we'll work on them and go from there. These folks all organize, although we will go ahead and try to help out with uh, Stoke on Trent so we can make sure to get that figured out. <clears throat> it was a bright English morning, prayer indeed, in the Johnson household. We're going to hang in the washing on the sick. I don't. I'm not going to give the tempo of a song right now. Going to hang out the washing on the sig free line. Heavy honey. Da, 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 da. Bodie sang as he tied his laces on his old army boots. Darling, wh why do you have your uniform on? Haven't you heard on the radio? The war's on again! We'll have to fight the fascists on our home soil! Give them the kraut garrison a good kick in the pants! I, I wouldn't miss it for the world! Margaret's eyes grew wide as she spinned to the kitchen where the radio was still on. Where fighting continues. Her Majesty's most low resistance or just any per person able and willing to stand up for liberty report to a friendly army base at once for assignments. If possible, please bring... Dear God, she would lose him again. Every month in the factory alone, every hour at home staring at the dusty fireplace came swimming back in her mind. She tried to control herself as she walked towards her husband. Oh, but don't be silly. You're much too old and they might not want... might have you anyway. It's not your fight anymore. That's what Harold said, remember? Her false smile cracked, and she could feel the tears start to well up in her eyes. Bertie was too busy getting tying his bootlaces, still with that awful devilish grin on his face. Darling, well, we almost had the blight as in the last one, and this time we'll really finish the job. We've got a good handle on the... He looked up to see his wife trying to cover tear teared up eyes on the stairs. His grin disappeared. I'm, I'm begging you not to go. I can't watch you leave again thinking you won't come back. I can't go through this again. There was a long pause as Bertie stood in the door, old rifle in hand, and MK3 helmet on his head. I'm sorry. I don't have a choice. Know that I love you with all my heart. He wasn't singing anymore when he walked out the door. When this lousy war is over, no more soldiering for me. I don't know if that's, that's how the song goes, but... Okay, let's get, uh... air going. See if we can get some air superiority, some close air support.
Air battle is probably going to be a tough one, but... This guy's free. We'll go ahead. Moving along to there. And with that, we'll go ahead and... Uh, do this for the Queen. Edward, Duke of Windsor, son of George V, traitor, is not the true monarch of England. That is the title that belongs to Her Majesty Elizabeth II, heir to George VI, who never surrendered her God-given right to the throne. In her exile, she has constantly strove for the liberation of her birthplace, and not once does she entertain offers of peace or conciliation. A true monarch is one who never ceases to inspire their people, rather than betray them to the Reich, like the current occupation of Buckingham. Elizabeth has become more than a representative. She has been an icon for the cause of liberty. The restoration of the Golden Age is at hand. We only need to take it from the traitor's cold dead hands. Her Majesty's most loyal resistance will see Elizabeth's crown in London and listen to her proclaim a kingdom united once more. God save the Queen. Reminds me, we have to go ahead to over uh, this little mechanic. No nation comes out. This is a new one, I believe. No nation comes out of civil war and scave, and the stars take long to heal. Heal. I think the civil war ravages of the land, destroying livelihoods and forcing ordinary people to turn to extreme solutions. Devastation will increase monthly every in every contested state. State is considered contested when no side has full control over state or its neighboring states. Should one side manage to take complete control of a single state and secure that state's borders, it will become a secured state. Devastation will cease to increase monthly unless affected by other factors. The more devastated a state is, the longer it remains devastated for, the more radicalized the populace there will become, leading them to consider more extreme options. This, this factors in, I believe, to the elections after the war, and makes it more like likely for the pe populace to support either Sterling, if the resistance wins, or Chesterton, if uh, the government wins, I believe. I believe that's how it works, at least. So right now, we have some devastation, say London, Sussex, all those guys. East Anglia, we seem to be, or Oxfordshire, East Anglia. All these northern states are good. Severn, we're getting a bit, because we have this bit. The western Midlands is okay, although I think that's because this guy didn't get a chance to fully occupy that territory. And now he's dead. Or he's about to die. No one starts a war, da da da. Don't give me the copyright strike for painted black. Oh, bloody hell. Um... That's a little annoying. Goes to the end of Arcane Norwegian. There we go. Are you guys head there? So, hmm. A little messy, our front lines, but... So we got this figured out. There sh those should be okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, frames are dropping. I'm guessing that's another war. Yep, that's the fall of Muscovian. Which I'm still not used to the frames dropping on that because that's a newer one, but still. It seemed that he couldn't convince anyone at times. He f remembered how his ideas were rejected. The anger he felt when he heard of the invasion had destroyed the possibility of ever accomplishing what he wanted to. Now Parliament sacked him, too afraid to compensate retaliation, too feeble-minded to stomach the thought of answering the atrocities that happened right outside the doorstep. Remembered how he felt that day 15 years ago when nobody listened to, believed, or understood him. But there was a man who was interested in the concept of justice untempered. When David Sterling showed up outside his house, he knew things would be different. Sterling was perhaps the greatest proponent of the concept uh, in the resistance. He managed to twist Claude into supporting in what some had called a ludicrous idea. War wreckage and aircraft around England was scores with a scrapyard on, or an air restoration foundation as a cover story. They were taken to a rail yard near the airport field where they were covertly and prepared for operational usage. 
Now, tonight, the plan was to put into, a put into action. Four of the aircraft were grounded, unable to perform form satisfactorily, some unable to form at all, but 20 were ready and would be conducting a show over the port of Plymouth. Arthur Ayer smiled. He recalled the ward of Hugh Trencher, the man who founded the RAF. I've laid the foundation for a castle. If no one builds anything bigger than a cottage on them, it'll be a very good cottage. So that wiped out that pocket very well. We'll go ahead and try to, uh... You blokes ease off on that. <sighs> Sorry they couldn't clear you to fly, Arthur, said Sterling as he sat on the main hanger off. It's gonna warm on the stove. I know you would've loved to see it. Hell, I would've wanted to get up there myself if I wasn't deemed so important. Harris looked over the, the fire. David, have you ever felt that you were in a position to win the war and you didn't? Sterling pondered the query for a second before responding. I've had a few operations go bad and a few regrets, but I never had as much power to change things as I do now. now there was a study that said we could have won the war in 18 months. In 18 months, we could have shattered the psyche of the German people, leave a third of their population destitute and homeless, and break the back of their industrial machine. All without a single man on the continent. That was the promise of aerial bombing. I believe in that study, David. I had dreams of ending the war at a single stroke with a thousand bombers over a city to end the U-boat menace with the flattening of Hamburg, to smoke the Ruhr off the face of the earth, to light Nuremberg with a glow of white phosphorus, to open the gates of hell into Berlin. But they didn't believe me, and the Nazis did what I wanted them to do with a single bomb over Honolulu. <sighs> but we have something now, and perhaps this raid will prove aerial area bombing may yet hold the key to securing England's future. He looked at his watch. They should be over Plymouth by now. When we secured the supply depot, I think we will want to go ahead. Well, this guy. Uh, who else do we not have assigned? We'll get you assigned to probably that one. Yeah, that's good for now. Let's do the Canadian connection. Not all of our leaders betrayed us to the Germans when they invaded. Some died in the fighting, but others were set able to evacuate and seize to Canada, where government and exile was established. Though we reject the air authority for refusing to stay and fight, we cannot ignore their preferred support. Canada is an important member of the OFN, after all, and so long as Germany is tracked by the Civil War, we might as well take advantage of the free oceans. Guns, men, bombs, a myriad of technologies and materials we cannot produce or great in great numbers or qual quality. For the restoration of Her Majesty, we require every possible advantage over the traitors. And thanks for the generosity of our kid in Canada, we will receive enough to make the bastards choke on their German cast-offs. We're all holding pretty well. We could be doing better in reading right now, but other than that... Many of the German garrison are preparing for another night in the barracks of Plymouth Naval Yard, preparing their beds for another night of fitless sleep. They take a notice of the air raid siren and are confused. Is this a drill? Resistance doesn't have an air force, does it? Then a panicked officer rushes in and screams at them to man their post. They run outside, still not believing what they heard was true. This isn't the Selt Vel Velkrieg, they thought. Who would be doing an action like this straight from the past? But overhead, the pass has already arrived. Twenty bombers have dropped their loads, barrels of disease fuel, with right phosphorus grenades attached to ensure detonation. In 1936, the first bomb detonates, and the inhabitants of Plymouth, Garrison, and Garrison alike are transported back to the darkest days of the Second World War. 24 minutes later, a report is radioed to the airfield. Complete success, the aircrew says. Dock yards are alight, the tank farms in the east, and has gone off, and the fires are spreading. Is it too much for Arthur? It is too much for Arthur Harris. For the first time in years, he begins to cry. They've done it. They've truly done it. Turning to Sterling, he says, proudly, the Germans will have to sleep with one eye open. Beautiful. We'll do an off 
That's not the one I wanted. Hold on. Where are... There they are. See, if we can take... I think Devonport is the only one we need to... Actually, it looks like they have cores on the rest of us. Moshe and Judah waited for the stay for the longest time. The Jewish community of England was hit hard in the Second World War. Many had been forced out of, the, out of their homes. The property had been seized and transported in the Rikers war loot, and many had been killed in the invasion aftermath. Moshe and Judah were not both not immune to these misfortunes, but while some sought refuge in the north, Moshe and Judah chose a different path. Joining up with other resistance groups, they vowed to continue the conflict to bring justice for the fallen of suffering. They called for other Jews to take up the call, and many did. Secret synagogues were canvassed, clandestine celebrations were infiltrated. Soon there was a sizable Jewish resistance force across the island. When the call came from Claude, they rose up. Now was the time to defend themselves. Now was the time to ensure that justice was carried out, and now was the time to ensure what happened would never happen again. Fracture for a fracture. Eye for eye. Tooth for tooth. We'll do an offensive line to there. You guys are still struggling to hold on, so we'll hold on for a second there. Oh. Reading is probably going to fall, but that's okay, because I think we're going to... Yep. We're doing a nice push. If we can kick the uh, garrison out with this, that would be beautiful. There we go. How shall we extol thee, though who are born of thee? Water still, and water shall thy bound be set. God who made thee mighty, make thee mightier yet. So, ooh. Um, I don't know if that matters too much, actually. Let's go ahead and do... We can just do a broad push. Nope. Robert R. was not a very good soldier. He was not a good runner, not a good spotter, and a rather abysmal shot. But by George, he wanted to serve England. So when a caring officer worried that Robert got into an actual war, he might kill someone. Said that a posting age company in Scottish Highlands was available, Robert just chuffed to have the opportunity to save his country. On a, one day on a routine patrol in the middle of a blizzard, Robert saw something. Something off a black figure. Is that a Stalheim? Sweet Mary, it's Jerry! He called out his raised companions, but they must not have heard him over the blizzard. The German was getting closer, my god. He's got his gun pointed right at us. Robert raised his own, shouting at the man to halt. The rest of the patrol looked over, stunned. Robert stood there, shaking. Everyone just stared for a few seconds, then. What in God's name do you think you're shooting at? It, uh, it was Jerry. Right over there, 50 yards or so. In the fucking Scottish Highlands, are you stupid? The, the, the helmet! The patrol walked over to the crumpled figure in the red snow. There, they saw the cross of Andrew on his shoulder. Some made crosses on their chests. One man vomited. Robert just stared, numb. Oh, Christ alive. Right, this never happened. Bury the body deep! Not under the snow, I mean six feet on the ground. I don't care if it's frozen, and nobody speaks a word to the lieutenant, or if I'll had it. Hours later, the patrol returned. Robert slumped along. He decided for his own, owned up for his crimes. He deserved nothing less than death for what he's done. Sir, I... He didn't get a finish before he was cut off by his squadmates. Uh, no, sir, just lost, sir. Nothing to worry about, sir. There was jubilation at Resistance HQ as a simple code ward was turned over the old telegraph machine. A simple yes. Auk and Luck was ecstatic. Relief of the Empire's former Dominion Canada agreed to help Resistance movement to end the last 20 years of tyranny and Nazi oppression. Resistance 
Allied agents of Canada and Canadian officers in England would soon begin coordinating supply drops, infiltrating those abroad who wanted to come back to f home to fight for freedom, provide training and assistance in taking down the Nazi occupiers. It would be a long, bloody struggle to claim Britain from the foreign authoritarianism. But with help from the old empire, the yoke of German oppression could be thrown off. Once again, Canada comes to aim the homeland. Hmm. Let's do in the factories. No one can survive for the ammunition, and no how fortunate it is that our workers are willing to make it. The traitors who made the mistake of alienating the men and women who ensure society survives, and now we reap the rewards of your actions. Shells and shell casings, gun barrels and the gears of tanks. An army without a supply base will soon be reduced to sticks and stones. Our factory workers know what will happen if they don't contribute. They know the horrors, the traitors, and their German masters were unleashed give in half a chance. They take double shifts without our asking day and night. Our workforce strives to reduce one more bullet so that their children may never experience such suffering again. We shall have our liberation, or we shall die trying. Let's get more guns going, because Lord knows we need them. We'll go ahead. With civil war raging, there's been little attention paid to the northern border by the resistance agents. Why are we waste precious men and resources on the Scots when there's a civil war to be won? So when several trucks crossed the border unmolested, striving by soldiers no notification, made their way to resistance-controlled military base, it was quite a shock when the drivers of the trucks spoke with a heavy Scottish accent. We expected such aid from the Americans, but it seems our brothers from north have chosen their path and have picked the right one. These trucks have been carrying the standard issue rifles of varying age and make from state of the art, by Scottish standards, old World War II weaponry that some of our older men used in the invasion of the UK. These arms have certainly come in handy for our fight against the collaborationist bastards, however it may come at a cost. The Scots would not just simply send aid to our cause without possibly wanting something in return, and as the risks are high and the rewards seemingly little, they may ask us start to ask that we when we inevitably win we reward them for aid. We can check weapons or take them, what should we do? We don't have a choice, it looks like every gun counts. So we'll start pushing with our armored boys. Um, devastation is pretty high in these areas, it seems. Although we're doing okay in re we might retake Redding. Uh, the armor seems to have been a fucking amazing pickup. You got boys pushed to Dover. That's your assignments. 20 years, thought Louis Balls. He trudged through the mud. 20 years since that acne ridden teenager with a stun gun shot a. Fallschirm Jager outside of Ashford. How he screamed at him to put his hands up as the German fumbled with his parachute. How he turned around with a Schmeiser. How panicked he was, he pulled the trigger and riddled the invader with bullets. And that was the first man he ever killed. Much more fighting gone on in those 20 years for Ball. Him being cut off had a lot to do with it, and so did him eventually finding an SAS stay behind squad. None of them were too keen on ever giving up, and Bell went along with the flow. He saw many of his friends die, seen people mauled beyond belief by explosions, and had been in many situations where he believed his life was over, but he kept going. One day, he thought England would be free. Any trace of collaboration and suppression would be eliminated. England would be a true democracy where every one thing would be decided by the will of people. No monarch or dictator would be doing the thinking for England anymore. And men like him would no longer be needed. But for now, he had to keep his thoughts in the present. The squad was task wiping out a collab checkpoint, and he had to get to the top of the hill before the frontal assault began. Who dreams dares. Excellent. Oh, we're doing we're doing pretty well, actually. I'm very happy with how we're doing. Oh. Today, trucks turned up to one of our northern bases, driven by identificationless soldiers. However, this time was not mere Scottish guns. Those trucks dropped off uniform men, all wrecking up officers in Scottish armed forces, although wearing English uniforms. It seems the Scottish government has decided to take a more active role in the Civil War, 
and once again they decided to pick the right side. Explaining their orders, they informed us that they were here to train troops and help advise frontline forces. Train Scottish officers is an obvious boon to our forces and many of our troops have little proper training. We lack like modern expertise training in facilities of which these men have had all three. While some of our officers and men may take offense at being trained and advised by Scots, we benefit these new arrivals can provide me outweighed with costs. Yeah. It's all coming together. In it. We're about to take Portsmouth. Um, apparently nowhere near capitulating. Hmm. Let's do the troops plead. War is not a quick nor easy process. It drags on when you rather it be over and done with. This is unavoidable. Our soldiers know the cost. Many served in the last war have given their lives to give their grandchildren a chance at a life free of a rag's monstrous grasp. Boys barely old enough to vote shoulder rifles alongside farmers and factory workers. Women, too. We shall remember them all. And we'll honor their sacrifice by striking down the traitor where they cower. And they've not given up the promise of Germania. None of them... None of us need have happened. Had we not given in when victory was possible, we might have survived without the tyranny of the Reich. Our soldiers know why they fight, not merely for liberation and freedom, but to grant justice for the members of Fallen. Their own dad, at least. Uh, what are th these guys doing? They're hiding the damage. We have nothing about the Germans. Hmm. Is this... Because this increases stuff in the kingdom, devastation in the kingdom, and I got gotcha. you. Radicalism is still low. Um, we've done very good in taking, uh, getting Cornwall out. I think that's a huge boon. And do we have cores on this? We do have cores on it. So that's more manpower and such. We're about to take Oxford. We'll take Brighton. Well, Portsmouth probably first, then Brighton. Shit, the timer's already gone off. Country divisions were set up for the defense of ghosts by the British Army. They've got a local formation of training units and home guardsmen in defense against the evasion. When the invasion came, the units were indeed instead transferred to fight along the regulars on the front. The divisions fought bravely, but despite the weapons and trained men hindered them in their desperate fight to stop the onslaught of Nazi mechanized slaughter. Thus, when the war ended, the division country divisions were disbanded, demobilized, and forgotten. But one division was not content with an honorable surrender. The officers and men of Northumberland County offered their services to the New Republic of the North, and Major D General Douglas Wimberley accepted this English unit as a part of the Scottish army. For years, they raided on the Scottish border, ready to defend the last bastion of democracy in the Isles. They gathered strength from the exiles in Scotland, equipped themselves to the best of their ability, and trained for Neville. In a part of the Scottish border that lacked collaborator patrols, the chain link fence that marked the border was cut with a pair of wire cutters. Squad mate made the first ten of his steps into English territory, was soon followed by infantry making their own gaps in the wire. More and more of the fencing was peeled back or just driven over by trucks, jeeps, and artillery pieces, all marked with the English flag. By morning, there existed a border on the border, a massive gap that burst in the English countryside. The men of Northumberland had returned to their ancestral home. The Northumberland Canada Division from the, Engl the English Division that had never surrendered had arrived from the past to free English the Eng to free England from tyranny. Sco underscore fen dot four dot a beautiful <laughs> Welcome to the fight, lads. I think we're going to end that right there, ladies and gentlemen.
on that note. Thanks as always for watching. Like, subscribe, leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. And once you more of this content feature, hit the sub button for more uploads every weekday as well as occasional Saturdays. If you have any comments, feedback, concern, anything of the sort, leave in the comment section below. I read all the comments to get. Appreciate any other feedback in my naff room. If you want to chat, play games, anything of the sort, check out my Discord, down link below. If you want to send a few bucks away, Patreon, if you want to see me do this sort of live on Twitch, and if you want to see non gaming content from me, check out my second channel. All of the links should be hopefully in the description box below. Thanks as always for watching. My name has been Mr. Dogwood33. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.